Welcome back to another What's New in Asana. Today, I'll be catching you up on all the latest updates and features from Asana's September and October 2024 releases. Now, I know everyone's been talking about Asana's big announcement at the Work Innovation Summit in New York, specifically the brand new AI studio. Now, I was there for the reveal, and I want to tell you it was incredible. And I'll be sharing everything with you in an upcoming series and show you all the ways that AI Studio can transform your workflows. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But for now, let's catch up on some of the other exciting updates from these past two months. We'll be taking a look at smart chat in Slack, setting rules and portfolios, creating status updates from your smart summaries, as well as other updates. But if this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Mark e. Murray. I'm the CEO of Surface and an Asana partner. And I create videos like this every single week to help you and your team get the most out of your Asana experience. So if you find this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Now let's get started. Now, the first update I want to talk about is your new smart AI chat within Slack. Now, the use case for this is that so many teams use Slack, and there's this big debate on whether you should be using Slack if you use Asana. Some people feel that if you have Asana, all the communication should be in Asana, but there's times when Slack is really helpful for quick comms, for getting people you know, really quickly. And so I'm going to show you what the new AI chat inside of Asana looks like. If you don't have the Asana app already installed in Slack, make sure you get it installed. What that will allow you to do at the base baseline will allow you to create tasks from Slack to Asana. And then in Asana, when certain actions and activity happens, you can actually notify people inside of Slack as well. But for this update, we're going to take a look at the new AI chat feature. So you'll notice if you hover up in the top right here, you may have this enabled. You may not. You may, you'll see the little Asana logo right there. If you don't see it in your Slack environment, you want to go to the little drop down here, and then you're going to go to your preferences, go to navigation, and you're going to go down to app agents and assistance. And so you want to make sure that this little guy is toggled on and you'll see it going on and off there. So that's the first step. Now, what this does is it allows you to stay within Slack if you are, you know, spending the majority of your time here, and it allows you to pull information from Asana right here in Slack. So you're not context switching all the time. So it gives you some prompts here. So what are my upcoming priorities this week? Are there any risks with my tasks? What was the impact last month? And so I can simply click on these, but I'm going to just put one in randomly and just see what happens. So let's just see what tasks do I have on Monday that are high priority. Let's see what it comes back with. So Asana is answering questions. So there we go. So based on the search description you provided, task data, it appears that there are no high priority tasks due on Monday, November 11th for the current user. The search was specifically looking for such tasks, but none of these tasks in the provided data match the criteria. Fair enough. In my My Tasks, I actually have a priority section. None of them were marked high priority because I'm finishing all of those up this week and there haven't been any that have been on my list. But what it is doing, the closest task in terms of due date are several that are due on Tuesday, November 12th. These include following up with certain people, as you can see right here. So it's pulling all the context from my My Tasks and the various projects that I'm a part of. All right, and next we'll be talking about how to create a status update from a project summary. Now let's switch over to my Asana here. So what you'll see, this is our video production. I can show you this because it's safe. There's no client information here. And the video I'm creating is created because of this project. And so what I do with all my, my really high priority projects. I don't want to miss a thing. And so I always make sure to switch on my project summary. What this does, this sends an email out every single week to say what has happened in the past seven days. But then I also get a notification in my inbox in Asana so I can check in and see if I need to take any action. And so what we have been able to do up until now is go and take a look at your project summary, and then you can share that summary, right? And so we get this little message where it says all the things that happened the past little bit, and then I can go and I can send that as a message to the channel. Now that's great, but then we also want to do status updates. And what was happening is we were sending messages. And then right after that, I was sending a status update using AI. And then there was a message with the summary and then there was an AI status update. So now rather than duplicating that work, if you are satisfied with the summary itself, you can choose to put that in a message as a status update. So right up here in the, on the three dots, you can click on more and then draft status update. Now we're going to go in and what it will do is it will pull in that same summary and it will put it into different sections for you which of course then you can modify and verify this information you can still pull in you know various tasks like so from the highlight section to see exactly what you've done 
in that time period. And then you can set the status here based on the amount of tasks that were completed or how you're feeling about the project as a whole. And then we can go ahead and post that. So a really nice step in the right direction, removing that duplication of work and using the summary that we're already receiving as a prompt to do the status update, but also as a way to hone in on the most important things that happened in the last week. As many of you already know, I run a consulting company called Surface, which is a proud Asana partner. We specialize in a variety of Asana services, including training and workflow optimization. Whether you're in the process of introducing your team to Asana because you're transitioning over from another tool, or you're already using Asana but feel like you're not quite getting the most of its potential, we're here to help bridge that gap. Our training is tailored to fit your team's size, workflows, and skill levels so that you can get the most out of your Asana investment. Head over to surface.com for more information or book a connect call using the link in the description. And the next update I'm going to show you is portfolio grouping. Now we've had grouping for a while, but now you can actually add a subgroup to your portfolio. So right now you can see I am grouping all of these projects in my on tour campaign by this event stage. So I have two that are in the data collection stage, and then I have three that are in data analysis. But if I want to further drill down, now we can go up and we can add a sub. So maybe I want to see a separation of all the tasks that are based on priority. So I can go in and I can have the event stage as the first one and then have priority as the second. So now let's close up our data analysis stage and we can see within data collection, we have those two tasks now separated by high and medium. And if we close that up, we can then see data analysis has one high priority task and two low priority tasks. And like we would see and expect with our projects, as soon as we change that field, it creates another section within that section for us. So grouping is, is really coming along. We no longer can just sort or filter, but we can really get to that information that we need. And so that's a really great step in the right direction for Asana. Now, the next feature that I'm going to show you as it pertains to portfolios is rules. And I'm really excited about this one because this is something we've been asking for for a long time from the product team. And so I'm going to show you what that looks like inside of Asana. So let's clear this grouping out just for a second so we can get back to our original board here. Now, if you go into customize, you can go down and now you can add rules. So there's lots to choose from here. One use case for us here at Surface is anytime we have a pending project, maybe we've sent an SOW out and we want to prepare for this onboarding or this upcoming client, I should say. We want it to come into the, the client project portfolio in a pending section. But because we use a template, the template would automatically create a project every time we move a task to a certain stage. So then we'd have to go into the project itself or the portfolio itself and then manually move it to the section pending that we want to. Otherwise, it would just stay in the no status section at the bottom of the portfolio. So now we can say when work is added to the portfolio, as an example, what do we want it to do? We can check if the due date, the status is or, you know, the owner is a certain person. And then what we want it to do, we have a couple of options here. We can move this or add it to another portfolio. So another use case that we've just started doing is as soon as a project is archived in our main client portfolio, we, we can actually move it and not multi-home it, but send it to a completed projects portfolio where we can archive all of our old projects and quickly go over to that portfolio, see all the information, see all the data in that one place. And it doesn't clog up our main client portfolio and and the workload and the timeline and all of that. And so we can move this or add it to another portfolio. We can remove work from portfolio. But in this case, we are going to, let's see, let's change the event status and we wanna change the event status to planning, let's just say. So let's publish that rule and let's just go and add some work and let's see this thing working in real time. So we just added a project here and there we go. It's automatically added our, our event stage. So if that is the first step in a long process of maybe product development, we typically have gate staging or different phases that projects need to go through. This is a great way to get projects into the correct stage based on the criteria that you set in the rules and then you don't have to go through all that manual work anymore. So really cool update. Go check it out for yourself. Now, the last update I'm going to show you is data aggregation in the portfolio. So for this example, I'm going to go over to our creative requests project here. So if you're in marketing, this is very familiar use case. You're dealing with triaging incoming requests quite often. You're assigning time and resources or percentage allocation. And so for this, we want to be able to see this um, information not only at the project level, 
level, but we also want to see it at the portfolio level. But up until now, the estimated time, which is the example we're going to use, I'm going to switch over to list view here. We've only been able to see the estimated time of the parent task roll up to the portfolio itself, right? The information in the subtasks up until this point has not been visible. And so we've had to just manually take this information and add it into a manual estimated time field in the portfolio. Well, we don't have to do that anymore. So if you're unfamiliar with how um, rollups work in the subtasks, you can see that there is no time in this main parent task, but we have two hours assigned to each of these subtasks here. If I close it up, we can now see we've got this rollup and it's given us that eight hours, that two by four. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add in 10 hours here just for fun. And then I'm going to go up to our creative assets portfolio that I've already created. All right. And so now we're going to go over it and we're going to add our estimated time field as a formula instead of just going in and adding estimated time. Because if we were to do it this way, again, we'd have to go in and manually enter that time and that just doesn't work for us. We want this to be as automated as possible. So now I'm going to remove this field. I'm going to go in, I'm going to add a roll up. And what this is going to allow us to do, you have to be in the advanced mode for this. But as you can see, it's going to sum up all your subtasks in a new field to include main task values and the field again, as shown in the first example. So here's the example that we're talking about here. So all we're really going to have to do is go into the brackets and we're going to switch to inputs here and we're going to select estimated time. All right. We're going to add it to the Phoenix library. Let's just put in estimated time and uh, go like so. We're going to create said field estimated time roll up. There we go. So what it's done now, as you can see, it's pulled in that 18 hours. So if we come back to our task here, I'm going to drop down our subtasks. So let's just remove that 10 hours for the time being. As you can see, we've got that eight hours now reassigned. We go back to our portfolio and it's updated automatically. So estimated time is one a great use case for this, but also for anyone who's tracking budgets or percentage allocation, again, you can do the same thing as long as the data is in the main task and then the subtask. And so I hope you found this helpful. That's going to wrap up this edition of What's New in Asana. And let me know in the comments which features you're most excited to try out. And as promised, I'll be creating a series of Asana's AI studios and diving into all the ways it can be applied to your workflow. So stay tuned for those. But before you go, please don't forget to like this video video, subscribe to the channel and share it with your team. Honestly, your engagement goes a long way to supporting this channel's growth. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.